Hey there. Yes, before you tell me I need a trim, I know I need a trim and I should really get one. I've been a bit lazy. I like it more beard. Anyway, this is not about the beard. This is about the Grand Vitara from Maruti Suzuki. And if you can't hear any engine, that's because I'm driving the hybrid version. And right now I'm on EV mode. Hi. Drive Oops. See? Voice control. I'm not saying anything else. But I'm on electric mode completely i've driven about 60 odd kilometers today i'm getting a fuel economy of 19.4 kilometers per liter so far but on these hilly stretches i'm actually increasing fuel economy it's been going up since i got off the highway so whoops sorry that's got to disable that stuff right now we're not going very fast so now let's give it some beans and let's enjoy the road it's got complete alpine fields over here. It's cloudy. It's, you know, lots and lots of yeah. nice green hills, but lots of cow dung on the roads. Of course, there are lots of cows out here in Rajasthan. Oops, sorry. Let's try to see cows in front of me right now. Whoops. I've got to overtake some cows. <laughs> So how is this Grand Vitara to drive? Now, of course, the main thing about it is the fuel economy. Let's not make any bones about that. But I've also driven the automatic and the all grip, which is the all wheel drive version. The all grip was very impressive. We did a small off road track yesterday and uh, it was extremely impressive. It could do things, uh, I mean, I've not seen any other Maruti that is not called a gypsy do that before. It's a comfortable SUV that could, you know, on the rutted road definitely. Nobody's going to really do that in a car, but yeah, if you're stuck in a rutted road, you can put it into lock differential mode and have a bit of fun. Now, I have no signal over here, so getting these signboards are nice. It's really nice, so I know where I'm going. I've got no signal, so my Google Maps is not working. As you can see, Google Maps thinks I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I've got cows to overtake all over the place. These are little baby calves. So which side do I go? Oh, no, they want to go this side. No, I want to go that side. Oh, well, sorry. I don't want to hurt them either. So let's try. And now, okay, this one wants to cross the road again. Okay. Lots of cows. Long story short, the cows aside, this has been an interesting drive with this car. So now I'm climbing uphill. Uh, that's where the power is kicking in. Now much for... And I've got signal over here, so I'm going to try and get my hotel. It's going to take 35 minutes, that's okay. And I'm back on EV mode. Alrighty then. So I've been making some stops. So again, fuel economy for me today won't be super accurate. But you can't really fault the farmers for walking on the roads because there are no patches for them to really walk through anymore. And this is the best place for the cows to walk, frankly. So a couple of quick thoughts as I pull over the side of the road, put into park mode and on this car. It's been a fantastic drive so far. Uh, the fuel economy is very good for a petrol SUV in this class. Much better than you'll get from any of its rivals. But this car could do with a bit more power. I wish Maruti and Toyota eventually get together and fit a turbocharged engine in this car to give it that power to compete with the likes of the turbocharged Creta Seltos as well as 1.5 uh, TSI that the Kushak and the Tygon have. On the whole, Maruti's done a great job. The steering wheel setup is good. The car comes with a lot of features, but specs are not universal on both types. So the automatic I drove did not have wireless chargers or ventilated seats. The all drip also did not have a wireless charger or ventilated seat. The ventilated seats options are only on this hybrid. I expect Maruti to sell more hybrids. That's why they're trying to, you know, reach out to you with all these features. The regular automatics may not sell all that much, but they will be very attractive to buy. 
Toyota has already priced this car and we think the Toyota pricing is attractive but we also expect Maruti's pricing to be even more attractive so I expect this car to be between 25,000 rupees to 30,000 rupees cheaper than the equivalent spec of the Toyota cars. I like the screen over here. There are lots of things to like about the car, rear legroom, luggage space, even though the hybrid loses a bit of luggage space because of the battery pack. And uh, all in all, a very good job by Maruti. But would you buy this over, say, a diesel version of the Creta or Celtas? Now that remains to be seen. That depends on how this car is priced. Now, the diesels and diesels are going to become more expensive once the BS6, the Bharat State 6B norms come into play from April next year, which will require cars to have a selective catalytic reactor and the AdBlue features, which means that you could see a price increase of 50,000 to even up to 1 lakh on some diesel cars which could make them a bit less attractive compared to these. So if your mileage is, I guess, less than uh, 50 kilometers a day, you won't get a diesel. I will show you how much uh, fuel economy I get when I get back to the hotel. But right now, um, impressive. But uh, yeah, my overall feeling about Maruti's now is that they can all do with some more power. Thank you so much for watching. Next time you see me, this won't be so bushy and thick. Thanks again. Now enjoy the view as I drive down this road.